Can you see? Is anybody I there? See me. And are there, do you see I anybody can there? See, not yet. Let's see. I saw your welcome sign. Hi, neighbor. I'll just talk. Hopefully, everybody pops on. Are we live, though? Do I you see, see welcome to live chat. Learn more. Tammy. I see Tammy. Oh, good. We got somebody up. here. Hi, Tammy. Hopefully, you're the person that was in the other one. We couldn't figure out how to start. Yeah. This <laughs> is new to me, everybody. I confess. I'm sorry. I'm fumbling around here. I haven't done a live. I've done a live or two, but I had them all set up, and I don't know. And so, your butterfly tracks. I, this is butterfly YouTube. tracks on YouTube. It's really fun to meet you. I'm <laughs> excited that you love to travel like I do, and so you love to tell stories yeah. like I do. And so it's fun to be here telling this story of my crazy rig <laughs> that I feel like I've been living in. Oh gosh, I just I just made tea, sorry guys, and I spilled it all over myself. Um, I kind of just, I've been living out of this thing for two months and it's been awesome and I love it. I miss my family, but I do love being outdoors. And um, I've been working on this build for a while. It's not done. Uh, I've got a lot to a lot of work to do, but I'll show you around. So if y'all want to see, um, usually in the truck bed, I have the stuff that I need to grab quickly. Um, I have food, water, clothes, and fishing. That's pretty much all I care about. Food, water, clothes, and fishing is in here. Um, if I'm not on a long trip, I always have with me my little go bag of small kitchen stuff so that I don't have to break out all the big kitchen things that usually live on here when it's the family trip. So I have like this small little stove, which honestly guys, this thing is awesome. I got it for $15 on Amazon, not gonna lie. I love my local stores, but if you can get something that works and it's small and it's $15, um, go for it. So instead of hauling out my big stove, which I, I have in my kitchen box here, um, I have this little, I always have to have my tea in the morning set up and it's perfect and it's tiny and it packs down into the, you know, the little cup that I have to boil the water. And this is all anybody really needs for a one night stop at the river make tea and have some granola in the morning and go so anyway nice fifteen dollars on amazon uh and then you know i have my tailgate with this this um stainless steel like cover on it which is nice there's a lot of different versions of covers that you can have installed on your tailgates if you have a pickup truck so look around, I just had this scrap piece of metal in my shed and it was bugging me. I, I haul around with stuff for too long and move places and carry stuff and this was sitting around and I went, ha ha, vindicated. I can use that thing I've been dragging around. It's awesome, it's a great cutting board, it cleans up easy and it's not bumpy like your tailgate. So that's why, but you know, look around, there's stuff online that's already made for different models and it'll fit your truck. Um, Paige, I don't think we introduced you. Oh, hi, I'm Paige. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paige Oliverio. Um, I do have Instagram. I, I haven't been on it in a while, but I'm going to start to share um, historical photos of my build because this truck has um, definitely changed over the last few years. So I'm going to post some really cool pictures of the evolution of it. And I've got a new trailer that I'm about to build out. So Paige Hill Oliverio. That's a lot of words. P-A-I-G-E, Hill, O-L-I-V-E-R-I-O. -E That's my Instagram. Um, and I'm gonna pop up pictures of what this truck used to look like, what it's become, what it's gonna be, because it's still evolving, and what our trailer build is gonna look like. So. Okay, I also wanna mention while we've paused for an introduction and a sip of tea, <laughs> that we're going to answer questions after we do the tour. So we'll have Paige look back and answer any of questions that you have. So have those ready. I can't say hi to everybody. As you know, this is live and unedited. Yeah. Something brand new. I haven't <laughs> seen anybody really do this, I don't think. Anyway, let's let's see. Take us on it's, a tour. It's so fun. Everybody's joining us live. Another thing, I've gone through a, a lot of iterations of how to carry water. Um, I like these thin water 
containers because they fit in these small spaces that sort of nothing else will like your box or your cooler is not going to fit in this eight inches right here but these nice thin water jugs do again walmart guys don't go crazy i mean they make the they, they make the 250 dollar versions but why <laughs> um eventually in my next iteration of this build i'm gonna have a swing out arm on the back of my truck that's gonna hold i always have this extra gas can because often i'll go off-road farther than where there's a gas station and even now we're here on beautiful eagle nest lake in new mexico eagle nest has one gas station that one gas station ran out of gas four times last week <laughs> so it happens in the wild and it happens in town so have gas with you ladies i hope i'm talking to the ladies because it's it's something i get asked all the time oh my gosh you travel alone as a woman and aren't you scared and no because i'm always prepared and i'll show you things like gas and water um what else so that's my kitchen under there. what else is in here what else is in here? So this is a, a whole box of fishing stuff. Of course. These are my boots drying because I've been wading in the river quite a bit. Um, I've probably fished 10 rivers in the last two months. I love it. I love being connected to nature. You see, I've got my no shoes on right now. <laughs> she's barefoot, folks, and those are rocks she's yes, standing on. I, Tell us about that. I just, it's so grounding. If I can, when I get up in the morning, I want to touch the earth and just connect and it tells me what temperature things are not that i didn't know already but, <laughs> but you know and then and just the minerals and the connection with with our earth i'll put shoes on to go to the bathroom you know or if it's crazy or if it's cold that's why i have all these different shoes for fishing if it's super cold i still want to be out there in the middle of the river and not being afraid of it so i've got all these different waders um clothes this is my waterproof clothes bag I'll tell you in a minute why everything's waterproof. I'll keep everything in the back and not in the cab if I can. Um, I've got two coolers right now. One has some dry goods because I've been um, unpacking at a cabin nearby. And so I have some extra stuff I usually don't have. And then one's got, you know, the ice and the cold stuff. And the other box is the bigger kitchen that, setup that I have. Um, these side boxes, We'll, right, we'll show those. Okay, we'll show those in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, and I'm happy to pull out what's in my bigger kitchen box if we need to look at it. But okay. it's, um, it's a two-burner stove that's really thin. It's made by Covia. K-O-V-E-A. Um, it packs down nicely. It. One of my favorite things about it is the burner actually turns down to simmer which was oh a that's hard stuff, mm -hmm. you know? i'm not going to name some brands but certain <laughs> brands just they just most of them let's just say <laughs> most of them yeah, yeah. so you can actually turn it down to simmer it's real thin profile i've got a cutting board i've got um a larger refillable propane because i really don't like I, these are handy and they're cheap at the store but they're not recyclable even though they say they are places just don't take mm. them and um they're not refillable they do make refillable versions of these uh -huh. um but then finding a place that will fill it for you is hard uh so what is it that you use you have something so in place have, of it maybe i missed yeah and instead of that i have not the uh 20 gallon you know the grill propane tank that's really big we bring that sometimes but i have one that's a five gallon a little white one you can get online or at some camping stores and so it fits in the box and it is refillable it is refillable that's good sometimes you have to convince the guys <laughs> because they're just that little bitty bit right yeah, they're like i don't know it's too small i'm like no no do it please do it <laughs> then you bat your eyes lady yes <laughs> use use the cards you're use dealt your tools. Use your tools. Yeah. <laughs> oh here's another thing i love 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 um these lights i have probably eight of them i've lost a few they're magnetic mm. in multiple directions they have multiple brightnesses one two three and off 
My truck is old, so it didn't come with a bed light. And if it did, it would have been blocked by this rack that I put on for my tent mm. anyway. But these things, look at this. Bam. Oh, cool. Bam. Yeah. Bam. Well, Light. your truck is not all plastic like some of no. us. <laughs> Light everywhere. So like at night, if you're walking around and it's super dark, you can have some ambient you know just point just leave it outside light down at the ground mm -hmm. and so you can walk around without tripping cool um they are great to add light to the bed so that when i'm digging around in these boxes at night i can see what's going on i can pop this up right here one on each side and i have beautiful lighting for my cooking good um it these things are awesome um 16 dollars for a pack of two home depot Home Depot, I never would have guessed. Yeah. Um, I forget. Oh, and they have a little hanger. So I I'll, I take them up in the tent. This one I can't get open. But anyway, they have a little hanger too, so you can hang it down like a... Very nice. It's awesome. These are... I, I give people these for Christmas. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a great gift. <laughs> They're awesome. By the way, since I am... The, we, this is kind of new and I, I have the camera reversed from usual. I don't see what's in here. If I need to move it a little one way or another, please let yeah, me know. You can, can see yourself see, fine. You can see me and the okay. Toilet. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Hey, necessities that, of life. I see that there's 14 people, I think, and then... I guess there's 14 people watching right now. Yeah. Hi guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and people will watch on replay. And and she told you earlier, but I'll, I'm happy to stay and answer questions. So pop some questions in the chat. I love um, to get people excited about overlanding and traveling solo. So any question you have, ask it. I'll answer it. And how long have you been doing all this? Uh, most of my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm 46 and I probably have been traveling since. I was a teenager mm -hmm. in different ways yeah a lot of it solo All, most of it yeah mm -hmm. it's it's sometimes hard to find traveling partners but also i like to be alone i mean the time on the road with just the radio off and the wind and just my thoughts has been so healing and has been instrumental in me finding my way in life hours and hours i mean so I'm from Central Texas. It takes a day just to get out of my state to go anywhere else. So that's a lot of driving. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then and traveling with friends is wonderful too. I've got I've gone on some special trips around all over the states with friends. And you obviously meet friends at the camera. That's yeah, what's wonderful, and that's what's wonderful. I want to tell everybody about traveling alone. You meet more and interesting people when you're by yourself. I think people just draw to each other. When you're with uh, just one other person, you end up staying, you can bring it down a little. I think okay, thank you. Um, when, you're, when you're with another person, you stay with your little unit. You talk to each other. You don't notice other people as much. They don't notice you. They leave you alone because you're with your little group. But when you're alone, you sort of end up gravitating towards each other and um finding new people is really it's really enlightening and i find that people are very generous and lovely yeah i'm the same yeah yeah so y'all be okay traveling alone yeah <laughs> set yourself up really you know people think uh, oh aren't, isn't that dangerous aren't you scared and the answer is no if you're prepared you know so i can talk about things that i carry with me people are always oh do you carry a gun I don't right now. I have in the past. It's okay. Um, I have bear spray. I am smart about where I stop. And that's the key. Yeah. Try to land somewhere where you don't need those things. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and well, how do you tell? Tell us about how you can tell if a place is safe or not. Um, okay. Well, I like remote for one thing. So usually where I land, I would be more worried about wildlife than I would be about humans. I love national forests and you can park for free in the woods next to a waterfall, wake up in the morning with mist all around you and not another soul around. So <coughs> um, learn how to read the national forest maps and the road maps. They're called motor vehicle use maps. 
and they're available online or you can order them from ranger districts in any state but it's pretty easy to find them online and those motor vehicle use maps we call them mvums tell you what roads in national forests you can drive on with your type of vehicle and usually on those roads within 100 feet of that road you can park anywhere that you can get your vehicle to park there are campgrounds too available um i also find <coughs> excuse me state parks are generally pretty safe and i mean this is where i'm at you so if i want to if i want to be around people and enjoy some features of oh a hummingbird just flew up behind your head oh um if i want to meet people or, or something like that uh, state parks are great. Have a backup plan though because a lot of times they're full, booked out several months in advance. Um, a lot of times I'll use state parks if I'm targeting some sort of um, uh, uh, weather or seasonal feature like the aspens are turning in October or the maples are turning in Texas in November. Then I'll pick a state park near something like that that's happening. Um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of ways to choose safely. And just be willing to move. If you pull up somewhere, I drove into I drove into the forest a couple of weeks ago, and my whole body, every time I would stop in this one place to decide to camp there, my whole body just had the heebie-jeebies. It just wasn't right. It didn't feel right. So I left. Just don't stay where it doesn't feel safe. Yeah, and you can't always point on point exactly at what it is that's making you uncomfortable. No, no, just listen to your body. And the more you're out in nature, the more connected you are to those feelings anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to come around and show the outside now, or is sure. there anything more in here you wanted to? No, I mean, this. that's it under my, okay. under my tailgate. Um, I'm going to be moving this tent up a few inches because one thing, a lot of people orient their rooftop tents, and I'll show you guys my rooftop tent in a second. A lot of people orient them where they kick out to the side of the car. Mm -hmm. I chose to orient it this way so that it acts like a cover. Um, if it's raining, I can still happily be under here to awning. Eat my dinner. Uh huh. So then I don't have to buy an awning, mm -hmm. you know. But I am going to raise it up about six inches on a different rack when I rebuild because I'm five five. <laughs> my husband's not five five. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you park a different way and everything's shorter, it kind of gets cramped but it's a good plan to use use what you have and don't buy a bunch of extra stuff good advice so uh yeah let's look at the rest of the outside so for larger trips i have what i call my side saddles these boxes um they are currently strapped on because i was prototyping if i would like this idea i love it so i'm gonna bolt them on so that the lids fold down and act like uh, more table space oh it opens up it okay does. yeah it, it these are cases so these are gun cases some people in some states have less access to that but in texas um arizona new mexico lots of stores have gun cases and i have these because they're way cheaper than the typical boxes that you can get for overlanding gear like these are 150 dollars and Boxes that are branded for overlanding are like anywhere from $300 to $500. So, since I ended up with four of them on my truck, I wasn't going to be spending three to $400 per case. They are, um, they because they're gun cases, they have breather, they have this breather apparatus on it that allows for air pressure exchange. So, a lot of times I'll travel from different altitudes you know, in a day, I'll go from 700 feet elevation to 9,000. And so it's nice to have these things that pressurize themselves. It was kind of an unexpected bonus. So mm -hmm. on each side of my truck, I have, these are, these are my extended kitchen boxes for when the family travels or like, uh, most of the time when friends say, can I go camping with you? I'm the one that has the gear to share. So I kit everybody out. I've got pantry on one side, more dishes and um, things like that on the other side. Okay, good. And then that's my rooftop tent. Let me tent get that, back a little so I can yeah. see the whole thing here. So up there's my rooftop tent that I was yucking about, but you couldn't see. Have I got it in? <laughs> this you've is weird. part of it. Yeah, no, you've got the tail end, and then there's a frame of the whole thing. 
and there's the boxes we were talking about. Up on top of my truck right there, those are two more boxes I'll give you guys a tour of, if okay. you care. Yes, of course. They want to see everything. Do you guys, do you want to go up in the tent, or do you want to see more about the place? Let's do everything downstairs, and let's let, save the best for last. Okay, <laughs> and then upstairs. I'll just stay there and take a nap when we're done. <laughs> right. <laughs> and is this your shower here? What no, is this? this? What is that? Um, so when I'm in a situation like I was last week where I was staying several days, um, off grid on a pristine river fishing i instead of taking my water jug or if my water jug runs out i filter water so i had taken some water out of the river you have to be careful about that understand about river ecology understand what's upstream i happen to know that there weren't cows upstream of this river so there was a low chance of giardia but don't ever drink straight out of the water anyway um, doesn't matter how clear it looks so I have this water filter, and this water tasted so good. I'm kind of sad it just finished today. I might have to go back up to the river and get more. But this, they've got a lot of these online. This one is water. Uh, you can't, the, there's a sun glare, but it's called Water okay. Drop. Again, online, Amazon. Um, yeah, online, is that separate from the bag? Is that all one? together as Okay. Unit. Yeah, this whole thing, this bag this hose this and and this is designed so you can just drink straight out of it mm -hmm. um i don't usually use it that way i just like my cups um i like this one because the filtering is fast S look on on the flow rate if you can look up reviews or read the reviews of any of these water filters before you buy them because some of them i mean it's like getting blood from a turnip <laughs> to get water <laughs> through forever. them. And I like this one, it's, it's fast. Um, and so I hang this bag with a carabiner on the side of the truck and I put my pot or my water bottle down there on the ground and this just drips and filters into it. And again, what is that called? It The company that makes this one is Water Drop. Okay, mm -hmm. good. All right, like let's keep going on around. Okay. Yeah, so I've got steps because I'm short. So I have I have custom bumpers, and this is actually not just a step; it's um, it's a skid rail because um, a lot of times I'll end up in situations where there's big boulders, uh, and so that just helps, you know, not tear up the truck. Yeah, buffer. But, yeah, but it's also a nice step, and then I have a roof rack up here that holds my boxes these oh, by the way so these are pelican vault boxes okay pelican makes them it's the vault model that's the model that has it's watertight it has a gasket it's got that breather this is the breather i was telling you about that allows for pressure for pressure i in these boxes i have a lot of recovery gear and tools and safety stuff and always first aid so i and i've got several layers of first aid this is first aid that's up here it's big it's for like if something really bad happens um in the cab i have first aid in my kitchen box i have first aid i have a box of lots of different here let me pull this out lots of different ways to tie things down that's all tie downs yep wow um, bungees, carabiners, ropes, you know, because if you go hiking too, it's nice to have a rope with you. Like if you fall off, you know, fall off the trail and need to pull yourself back up, just little things. Um, and this again, like, I'm not into specialized stuff. I got this box at Home Depot. And was already full of... It wasn't full of those. Oh, things. okay, gotcha. But it has, you know, it has little containers, which some of some of which I took out. But it's just a, it's in the tool section. It's for sorting screws. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good for several different things, probably. Yeah. Oh, totally. I've got a couple of them. Um, there's some condensation in that box up there, though. I've been a few places. It's been raining a lot this month. Um, on the other side, I'll show you my bag of recovery gear. Always a shovel. Yes. Um, batteries, screwdrivers, 
Um, Earplugs for state parks. I don't <laughs> like generators. <laughs> um, and then sometimes I'll stay with a friend in their driveway and their neighborhood has a lot of dogs. So I can't sleep with, I'm, I'm really sensitive to noise. Hand warmers, always have hand warmers. Always have zip ties. Always have a poncho. Always have a whistle. Do you have duct tape? <laughs> Do I have duct tape? <laughs> You have duct tape. Of course you have duct tape. I have duct tape always. Crowbar. Now you have four-wheel drive. Do you also need things to, um, you know, something you put under the wheels to yeah, get out? Yeah, I can show you that on the other side. Okay, when we get I over mean, there we will. You know, but look, see that rock? Point your, that rock right there. Mm -hmm. People always get on our overlanding groups and say, what do y'all use to level? Whatever's around. Yeah, <laughs> a rock. A brick, a stick. Um, you know, the other night I had some firewood with me and I put two pieces of firewood under my thing because I wasn't, I was too lazy to go get my blocks. You know? <laughs> yeah. How about on the inside, since the sun's coming this way, uh -huh. may, yep. maybe whatever you were going to show on the inside? Yeah, well, there's not much because I don't like to have a lot of stuff in the cab. It's dangerous. If I were to get into a wreck and things went flying, I don't want them to fly into me or anybody else in the cab. So it's you know it's hard with a seven and a half year old <laughs> to not have a bunch of junk in your trunk but uh so what do i have right now more fishing i've got my my cold weather boots which thankfully i didn't need last night my computer because i can work from the road mm -hmm. um my snack bag that's that's what's in the back and then i've got you know these these are great these things that attach to the back of your seat there you can get them in all sorts of varieties i'm going to get another one for this seat and that holds all the little containers of sunscreen bug spray extra dry bags um you name it all the all the bottles that end up in the car things that would rattle around yeah this this pocket has my kids toys all in it he's expected to tidy up every time we get out oh and i'm a map girl i i like paper i have all the map apps too like gaia and stuff but i don't always trust that i'm gonna be online and able to use them and so i have you want to show that yeah i have maps and maps and maps this is where i keep my mvums because usually in national forests there's not a lot of signal so, like this one is for Latir. This is what, guys, this is what an MVUM looks like. A nice, happy, black and white piece of paper that tells you where you can drive in the national forests. Um, what else inside my cab? Oh, up here up front. I keep all of my communication and power related stuff. That may change when I get my auxiliary battery and my bear spray. It's really more for humans than bears. <laughs> <laughs> but you would not use it in your vehicle. Uh-uh. I think no. people sometimes leave that out. They say, you have your bear spray. <laughs> it's for uh, outdoors. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I would even think to use it in my truck. But I often, people ask me questions and I go, gosh never would have thought about that because <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you already thought of the common sense thing yeah, right yes I, I guess so um garmin i have a garmin in reach it has an sos button um as long as you can triangulate to a satellite if you get into danger you can push this sos button and help will come um i can also send messages out to people if i'm in a pinch um and really need to get a message out and I have no cell coverage. Uh, this, you can do rudimentary texts from this. Uh, if you want to, there's an app online and people can track your position, you know, uh, um, friends you can send, you know. You can do them. that with Google, um, Google Maps also, you share your location and they can yes. watch you drive. Yeah. It's a little delayed, but they can actually <laughs> watch you drive down the road. Yeah, they can, <laughs> yeah, if you have signal. If you have signal. Um, so this is really, this is an emergency. Thing. Um, I have GMRS radios. They're walkie-talkies, basically. So, um, if I'm traveling in a caravan, um, 
through some trails or down the road and we need to communicate with each other or if I need to send my son away down to somebody's camp I can <laughs> get him back <laughs> um, I also because so my cell provider is AT&T but um, AT&T works some places Verizon works some places and since I try to work from the road, uh, I have a Verizon hotspot in addition to my AT&T phone. Mm -hmm. That's in here. Um, a high powered, always have lots of flashlights around. High powered. Can't have too many. Yep, and have one that's a backup to the one when the, when the, I'm sorry, there's a prairie dog being cute, stuffing his face with grass. I got distracted. I, I don't he's see him. There. I was going to show him. He's, he's still oh, there. over there. I yeah. hope you can see him. He's just stuffing his face with grass. <laughs> I love watching these prairie dogs run. He just popped his head up there a little. I hope you can see him. Okay, sorry, guys. Yeah, I, it was I, a distraction. I, We're out in nature. We can't help it. I have ADHD. So. <laughs> yeah, you too? Um, <laughs> it's why we're here. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then this is the remote for my winch that I'll show you in a little bit. Just lots of things related to power and to communication. And I've got, where'd it go? Yeah, an auxiliary power um, charger that goes in. Inverter, really, yeah, right? An inverter, yeah. Um, eventually, I'm going to have a backup battery, a secondary battery with the inverter built in. And what do you have now for power? Right now, it, I just rely on what on my battery on oh, my truck, okay. which is not smart. Um, I'm I'm looking into, I have been for a while, looking into getting a Blue Eddy. Um, I know we talked about that. <laughs> There's also, who else, who's the other? Um, the Hobotech is a neat, um, you could look at on Facebook. There's a group called Hobotech and they talk a lot about auxiliary power got a lot of reviews in one place yeah yeah I, that's a good place to just listen and people nerd out about how that stuff works because i'm actually kind of dumb about how electrical works <laughs> and i'm daunted by this that's why i don't have it already installed but i have friends who are really into it and they're gonna help me with that part because i don't trust myself <laughs> Um, I mean, that's it. I try to, I try to not have much stuff in my cab. That's good. Uh, I've got a three inch lift that doesn't help with clearance, but it helps with being able to put on different tires. These are a bit more, um, grippy for the off-road. Mm -hmm. And what it, these are BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2s. Okay. Nice the, big tires. Wish I could get that on my little minivan. Big, big, big. Well, you could put a lift on your van. <laughs> well, I could, except I that uh, my warranty won't let me, oh, and I love my warranty. And you might also love your gas mileage. Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and that would affect it, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. I just can't get over the fact that you're barefoot out here. Oh, oh I love it. I wish warm. I could. It's nice and warm. Um, okay. This is a, Have I got it named right? And, huh? Am I directing I correctly? Think, yeah. If okay. you want to do it a little more down, I can talk about the winch. Okay, sure. Um, I like helping people. So I have this winch uh, installed. This is a custom fab bumper by C4 Fabs. Took a while to get here. Mm. Not going to lie. <laughs> so that, that whole big black piece, uh -huh. it was added on. You took the bumper off and put Correct. that on. Correct. This is an added steel bumper. And it has space already built into it for this winch. This is a Warn, W-A-R-N winch with an added, They. this is not the rope that it comes with. This is called their, I think it's called Spidura wire. And it has this reflective line in it. So if you're pulling somebody at night, people can see the rope going across, say, say you have to pull somebody from across the road. Um, it's got this reflective line that's nice. So at people night. don't run into it. Yeah, yeah, and just so you can see what you're doing. Um, so, have you had to pull yourself or someone else out with that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it, you know, it's funny. Well, first of all, in Texas, people aren't used to snow at all, and so we had a big storm a couple of years ago that blew through Texas, and everybody was off in all of the ditches. <laughs> oh. So I actually spent like six hours one day 
and a couple other neighbors who drove by and stopped and we and we would we would see somebody and they'd go off and we'd be pulling them out and then the next person we could call it we'd go oh oh, oh Sebring's about to yeah 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 there they <laughs> there are they went and so we just it started with the mail truck <laughs> <laughs> and then just after a few hours we were like well this was a fun day <laughs> and then up here in um in the mountains too i was driving through the canyon one night late from eagle nest to raton and somebody had gone off the road and, mm. well here's the thing too though guys when you're buying your car look to see if they make it with with tow points on your frame which i didn't know was a thing but I went to help this Volkswagen out of a ditch and they didn't have any point on their frame that you could attach a, a tow hook to. It wasn't designed that way. Then what? We eventually, some other people came by, two or three other vehicles, and we I had my shovel and I had my um, treads that I'll show you in a minute. And with the shovel and the treads and people pushing, we got them pushed out. Oh, wow. I never would have thought of that. I'm pretty sure I, that that right there does not have. <laughs> look, we'll look on your vehicle later. Okay. Um, it, it's good to know. Yeah, I, I was towed, uh -huh. but they put it up on a uh -huh. flatbed. We'll look but they had to hook the, the, they had to pull it up onto the flatbed, I think. So there had to be something they hooked it onto to just, just to tie it down. It was, I didn't believe it until somebody who was out there with us um, looked up the owner's manual of the car that we were trying to find the hook and they said in the owner's manual it said that there wasn't one and I was flabbergasted. I was like, who uh, would build a car without a tow, tow point on the frame? You really? Let me get a shot of the front. Am I getting the front right here? You are, yeah. Exactly. Okay. If you point it a little down you can see a little more. There. Yeah, there. See the, see the tow thing and the whole bumper and all and those nice big tires. Yeah. I don't like the gas mileage, but you, you give up some things. Um, I've mentioned a few times I like to fish, mm -hmm. so you can see my fishing rack there. The sun the may be destroying this shot, but I still no, want to show it's, it. Actually, it's not. Okay, good. Yeah. And there's your other box. What do you call that box again? Tell me again. The Pelican Vault. And this is the one that has, this has more, this has most of the recovery stuff. I've got a tow strap. I've got what's called a soft shackle. I love all these handles. Like I almost just fell back mm -hmm. and I, I can grab it. It's nice. You just got to remember to close these up before you head off. Oh gosh, yes. I've, I've headed down the road and I heard like a thump on top and I couldn't remember what it was. And then some guy starts waving at me and pointing up, you know, like it's, uh, let's see. There we oh, go. okay. Okay, good. Thank oh, you. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, uh, this is a learning experience for me. I'm going to do better next time, no, I promise. You're great. You're great. Um, this is a compressor, so for airing up tires. This is a high, a high volume compressor because um, a lot of times on off-road trails or maybe on the beach, you want to air down your tires. Mm -hmm. So you air them down, way down to like 18 PSI. Oh. But then when you get off of wherever that was, you don't want to roll around yeah. 18 PSI. So the little compressors that uh, usually people get at the store don't work fast enough. Like I don't want to sit around for an hour airing my tires back mm -hmm. up before I can go. So this is, I, I don't remember the brand. I can look if people ask. Um, I get to tell people about my favorite treads. Let me see if the sun's a little less. You're doing it. It's okay. I, I mean, it oh, that's like probably a better point. angle here because okay. the sun's not in the and shot. Then you can point it up again. Okay. Yeah. Like, am I there? Yep. <laughs> These are called Go Treads. Let me crawl down. Um, there we go. Perfect. These are Go Treads. They fold up nicely. They work as blocks. You can level your vehicle at different heights depending on how many stacks you make and then drive up on. Mm -hmm. And then they're a great recovery tool for a lot of situations. This is, I've helped a lot of people out of ditches with these. I haven't been stuck myself, <laughs> thankfully, but um, maybe that means I'm just not driving hardcore enough. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, these go treads are great. I love these guys. They're very customer service oriented. 
Um, they have been around since the 70s, but keep innovating. They came up with some new gadgets recently, just last year, where you can attach one set of treads to another set of treads oh. and have a longer travel for your recovery. Because sometimes that, sometimes you get past the tread, but you're not out of your sticky mm. situation yet. Um, and now go treads spelled just like it sounds yes. and two words. Yes, G O T R E A D S. Okay. Here, let me see. It's probably. Let me. I think. Let me get a, an angle. I don't know. Yeah, uh, you can kind of see it. Go treads. Go treads. <laughs> Love these guys. They. Um. I go to every now and then. I go to Overlanding Expos. They're always there, and it's always the actual guys who like run the shop, and they'll talk to you, and they'll go, "Oh no, okay, use it this way." They've got tips. They've got videos on YouTube about how to use these. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a right way and a wrong way. <laughs> but yeah, these are awesome and they pack up so nicely. Um, there's, you know, a lot of times people will drive around with all of their stuff attached to the outside of their rig. Like their gas cans on the outside, their water's on the outside, their treads are on the outside, their high lift is on the, high lift jack is on the hood. Like they're advertising everything. And to me, that's just like advertising all the things that you can steal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I don't like to have all my stuff. I know it's popular, but I don't. Here's another bag of ropes. Um, I've got my, I've got my bling bling up here too. My, um, when I roll into camp with the kids, I've got my sparkle lights and all that stuff that I set up at camp. Usually I don't have that out, but I've got it here if I need it. I feel like this video is getting long, so I'm not going to drag this bag out, but there's a backpack here that's got all the rest of my recovery stuff, mostly toe strap kind of things. And she's not talking surgical recovery. No. <laughs> <laughs> recovery from situations that you get yeah. yourself into. Yeah, though it can feel like a surgical operation sometimes. <laughs> like um, some friends of mine recently just, just talked about it. An uh, adventure they had where they a family had gone off the road where they were going up on a trail and it took three of them and a couple of hours of deciding how they were going to rig all of their ropes to get this family out. <laughs> and a tow truck had come by previously and failed. Oh, yeah. That's a bad sign. I was like, that guy doesn't need his license anymore. <laughs> We're almost here. We're almost, I mean, I don't know what else people want to know about me. Well, we do we'll want to see the, we'll, we'll answer questions, but we want to see about your tent here. And I've been nursing this. Piece. Yeah, she's got it open around here and I'm going to hand the camera to her so she can do a little tour of inside here yeah, and then we'll go sure to question. <laughs> no, thank you. It's not that bad. Oh, I, just, I said it's not. I know I could I do it, but it would be awkward. <laughs> okay, so we're going in. This is my favorite place. Here, I'm going to hand you that. Yes, I'll take that. Usually I have my tea with me all the time. So this is a Smitty built tent. This is their first generation tent. Um, they have a newer version out now that's got a few things that they've changed. Honestly, as a designer though, I've I've redesigned this thing like 10 different ways and I'll probably write them and give them all my ideas. I'll tell you the good things about the tent. I love it. Um, it's big. It's got a lot of headroom. This is a, basically a queen size bed. They have an XL, which is almost a king size bed, but um, you have to have a trailer for that. This one is the largest tent I could get that would fit on the back of a five foot Tacoma truck bed. Um, it also, the other thing I like about Smitty Built is I can close it up. I'll show you guys in a minute and I'll close it. I can close it up with all this bedding inside. I've got two pillows, an extra mattress topper that's two inches. Um, a fluffy down duvet and a couple of fans you can't see over there in the corner and I close all of that up inside my tent when I close this thing up and it fits and that's not true of a lot of rooftop tents. It's got a rain fly. I can leave it off if I want to. I usually do. Um, 
I love this tent. It's very roomy and it's very easy to put away. I have to take these metal sticks off before I can fold it. I don't know. You know what I might do? I've never tried this. Folding? No, I'm not going to do that. That's silly. I'm not going to fold it up with the sticks. <laughs> but I will take them off so that okay. people can see how it folds up. Yeah, we'll, we'll time her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I timed myself the other day. Actually. Did you? It was exactly six minutes. To six put, minutes. Put away. And, you know, it's funny. I texted home to a couple of people. I was like, I can't believe I gripe about how long this thing takes to put away because I timed myself in it six minutes. That's just seemed longer <laughs> it does you know when it's 20 degrees outside <laughs> it seems really long I'm not gonna do it as fully as I normally would so. yeah just giving an idea how it how it folds up so far no big deal no. it's it's wait till I put the ladder up it's just like you're gonna go oh what Okay, all the little stakes are down. Now let me make sure that you're far enough back. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, back Do up I need little, to come back this way? Back up that way a little more so you can get the whole. Yeah. Like this? Go. Yeah. Am I aimed right? Yeah, down a little. <laughs> down a little? There you go. Watch this, guys. Woo! Done. I mean, I have a bag to put on. Which is part of what I've redesigned for Smittybilt. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it'll take me like three more minutes to fit the bag on top, strap it down, and I'm done. That's pretty cool. That's my bed. It's awesome. I don't stay in hotels if I can't, if I can avoid it. Anytime I go to a town, if I get, like I got stuck in Albuquerque for a couple of days last week. And I just found the MVUM for the National Forest nearby. It was a 20 minute drive. It was free. And I got to sleep in my own bed with my own pillows. Home. And it was Albuquerque. Home, yeah. home on the road. <laughs> so you wanna yeah. go over and sit down and uh, scroll yeah, through some yeah, questions? Yeah, you got questions, people probably wanna like, look closer at something. I'll walk over here with them, that's fine. No, okay, see. y'all. You want to scroll? Probably questions? scroll back. You may not see it yeah, till you scroll. No. Okay, here we go. Enjoying the video. Jan, you're doing a great job. That's for Maria. <laughs> Question How many years have you been camping? Um, Maria, I have been camping since I was a teenager, and I'm 46, so uh, most of my life. If, 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 if it was 16, that's easy. 30 yeah, years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's kind of hard for me to admit there's been 30 years since my youth and now. <laughs> <laughs> You're still young. You're a kid. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, gosh. Um, the camp hosts here are easily in their late 80s. Really? And they are living the good life. They got married in the Grand Canyon under a waterfall in 2007. <gasps> oh, my gosh. These, these guys, you got to meet them. They're so... I don't know how to scroll. Let's see. Oh, down, down. So, uh, yeah, to go back, I think you'll scroll down. Let's see. Let's see. Go back Keeping to the beginning. Keeping our antenna up always, uh, always allows spirit to speak to us. Yeah. yeah I like that. Oh, speaking of antennas, I am going to get a self booster at some point. A little. The, let's see. Hi, Jana Page from Maria. So Maria is super engaged and happy you're on. Oh, thanks, Carol. Love Barefoot Friends. I wonder I think, if, yeah, not a lot of questions, really. I wonder how many were on our live last night. That was kind of a, just a very spur of the moment. Hey, let's go live. I, uh -huh. It was very experimental. Yeah, I guess there's probably some way you can check that out. Yeah, you can watch the replay. Uh-huh. Um, these you know. guys, oh, these guys have a different kind of rooftop tent. If you want to, yeah, when them. they come by. Well, that's a tent that that's falls tent. really that, flat. That tiny little thing is a tent. Uh huh. It's ah. called a roof nest. Hmm. I can't put it on here unless I get rid of my boxes. Mm hmm. Which is why I've kept this this smaller profile. I mean, it's not a smaller profile tent. Um, 
It's a smaller tent. But they, they, theirs is basically the same queen size. Oh. But it's all contained flat on top of their roof. So if I had that, it would stretch across the top of my cab. I see. So I wouldn't have room for my boxes. Yeah. Yeah, that's extra storage for you. Now tell us uh, more about the vehicle itself because we didn't really say the year and the make and all that kind of thing. Yeah, because they're rolling in a different Tacoma over there. It's always fun to see Toyota friends on the road. <laughs> um, this is a 2007 Toyota Tacoma, um, four-wheel drive, manual transmission. I always drive manual transmission vehicles. It was black when I got it and a lot of other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, I paint it, you know, black and I live in Texas. That's silly. Uh, plus it was, it was road hard before I bought it from this gal I know. She had it up in Colorado. It was just the poor thing had been beat up. So, and she smoked. I'm allergic and I don't like smoke and it had cloth seats. So the first thing I did was redo the seats inside because um, one of my hats is I'm a landscaper. And so I knew I was gonna have bags of dirt and rocks and things like that in there anyway. And I also um, have a seven and a half year old. <laughs> and at the time we had pugs too. So I could just see all these things velcroed to those seats and I was not having it. So I put in leather seats. I had it, I painted it. This color took me a while to land on. It is a Porsche color called chalk. And I giggle every time. It's a very rare color. And every time I actually pass a Porsche driver with that vehicle, I can see them look at my car and go, but I, but I, <laughs> but <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> because it's a color you have to choose if you're buying a new Porsche. Mm -hmm. um, it's not one that's like off the rack. So oh. <laughs> everybody here has a chalk colored Porsche, has put some effort into choosing that color. And then they see me and they're like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, I added um, front and rear steel bumpers. And oh, I haven't shown you one of my favorites. Oh, things. okay. Let's do that. Because <laughs> my kitchen was in the way. So yeah, 2007 Toyota Tacoma, when I bought it, I had to put like $10,000 into just normal upkeep before I could even start with the overlanding build. It has a new drive shaft, it has a new shifter assembly, new clutch, new bearings. It was ridiculously beat up. So my bumper is a high clearance bumper for off-road situations and it took me a minute when it showed up for me to understand where the tow hitch was because look at my <laughs> point down. Oh, it's okay to show it? Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I was no. trying to signal you, let's don't show it, no, but do you want to show it? This is me, guys. I'm Taco Truck. So anytime, well, it's backwards on the, on the video, but you can tell what it says. T-A-C, Q-R-K, but there's a taco, zero in the, yeah. an O in the middle. On taco truck and behind taco truck is the hitch assembly. So I can stick the tow hitch in here, but then when I'm off-roading and, and doing like some high angle stuff, this is a high clearance bumper. So that's nice. And let's see. Of course, mountains, please. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, I forgot to show everybody that. It's kind of hard to not, it's kind of hard to, to be incognito when yeah. your license plate <laughs> says taco truck. So yeah. I'm not shy about showing it. That's good. I think your your vehicles are already recognizable without yeah, having to see that. I, know, I don't really feel It's like unique, incognito right? Incognito at all. Yeah. <laughs> But I love it. Yeah, I like going to um, expos. There's, for people who live in Texas, there's an expo the end of September um, put on by Texas Avid Outdoors. So it's the Texas Overland Expo. It's going to be at Oxford Ranch, which is in Central Texas near Llano. So y'all in Texas, go check it out. I'll be there. And a lot of cooler rigs than this. <laughs> well, what I like about yours when I first saw it was the fact that it's so compact 
not oversized, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, I'm in well, a minivan, yeah. so I like that when idea. When we finish this video, well, let's walk over and <laughs> yeah, do a hot little blip about that. Yeah, I think thing. we'll record that because it'll take a while to get there, and yeah. so I'll just record that for for yeah. another video. For but no, that's why that's why I have this. Um, I like to be agile. I don't like to carry a lot of stuff, although I somehow magically end up with a lot of stuff. Anyway. But it's all compact, though. <laughs> but it's tiny, so I can go anywhere. You know, we were at Yellowstone, and I kept seeing signs that said, you know, if you've got a trailer, you can't go down this road. If you've got an RV, you can't go down that road. And I just, you know, or like it's more expensive to camp at places if you've got a, a trailer and a, a truck because they require you to do the RV camping instead of the you know, the primitive stuff, you know, yeah. like, I just like to keep it small. And cool. Yeah, yours is probably got the same footprint that mine does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And so you can turn on a dime and you're yeah. going to be less, I mean, less gas yeah. than a lot of the bigger rigs for sure. Yeah. Well, and it's not a single use vehicle. This is also my daily driver. Mm. You know, obviously people aren't going to be driving around town running to Costco in their RV. So that's something you park somewhere. You have to maintain. You they got to have a toad. Got to have a toad, <laughs> yeah. Or, like, you know, and some, some neighborhoods don't. If they have an HOA, they don't allow you to have an RV parked in your driveway. So then you have to pay for parking somewhere else for it. Um, this is just my everything vehicle. It's my daily some people like i don't do hardly any stealth i've done almost none Uh um and that's not very stealth though right no i would say that if i were to do more of the kind of overlanding where you're parking in a like church parking lot or a walmart or you know a neighborhood street to stay the night this is obviously not stealth and i can't pop that tent out without somebody knowing somebody's camping Um, which I've thought about, and that's actually why, uh, I would eventually change out. Well, I, so I've, that's a good lead in to my trailer build. Yes. Tell us about (laughs) that. So I've got a 1950s military, um, trailer. Eventually, once that's reconfigured, I'm going to move the tent over to the trailer, this tent, and I'm going to get one that's even quicker and more stealth and like probably will just stay up on top of the truck. Or I will build, um, we call it a seat delete. Anytime you like take the back seat out and replace it with something. So there could be seat delete for a refrigerator or seat delete for a bed. And what I might do instead is make that back seat um, nicer to sleep in so that if I am trying to be stealth, I can just park somewhere, crawl in the back seat and be done. Yeah, I wondered about that because yeah, you don't want to pull a tent out in a no, <laughs> Cracker no. Barrel parking lot or no, something. <laughs> I'm sure some people have, and I don't know. I just, I, I'm very self-conscious, and I also, like, if something's on my mind, I can't sleep. So I know that if I did that, all night long I'd be waiting for somebody to roll up, you know, like the police and knock, knock, knock. And so I wouldn't sleep all night just worrying about that. Yeah. But, you know. State parks, national forests, um, places where you know that it's allowed. I just target that ahead of time before I head to the, like, I'm going to take four days to get back to Central Texas. And I have mapped out my drive so that I know ahead of time. Where your stops are. Mm -hmm. Are there any more kind of comments or questions we need to cover there, you think? I don't think. Do I have a channel, Pauline? No. (laughs) I'm trying to get her to. I know. It'd be perfect. I'm told. So I, I have been off social for a good while, and um, I'm about to hop back on. I do have Instagram where I'm going to start posting some historical fo- photos of my build. It's Again, it's my name, Paige, P-A-I-G-E, Hill Oliverio, O-L-I-V-E-R-I-O. From that, I'll probably start adding things like um, when I do some videos, I'll start a channel. Um, my old, my old urban farm has a YouTube channel, but that's not, you know, related content. So, uh, let's see who else, uh, I I keep putting my finger right in front of the, maybe I missed it, but are the Home Depot magnet lights solar powered? They are, they're not, Pauline. I charge them through my, um, 
my uh, charger on the dash. So they're USB. not solar powered. Okay. Yeah, they're USB. Mm -hmm. That's a really great question. I do have a lot of solar powered lights, but those are not. Um, Jan, let's see. Maria says there were a lot of people in the chat last night. Yeah, that's great. And it was so, it was a little goofy, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's it for additional questions so far. Okay, great. Well, I don't know how long we've been on here, but if nobody else has I questions, know. we let's might see. say bye. Exactly one hour. Exactly. One, well, isn't that zero, great? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just perfect timing. Yeah. Well, it's thank you, everybody, fun. for coming coming along mm -hmm. um this will be on um as a replay and i'm pretty sure you can put comments in the replay of course and we'll be watching to answer those there go our earth roamers yeah we had oops yeah <laughs> we had horses here yesterday and the day before i thought i smelled some yeah oh that's yeah, awesome horses. i didn't see those yeah oh, bummer. got all kinds of little wild yeah, those around are the, here those are the guys in the beast over there oh yeah i am gonna go get some shots of that just just uh -huh. wow that's a beast for sure it is. <laughs> it is they're they're living their life yeah it's funny though to see something like that at a state park like that could be on top of a mountain right now. <laughs> I know. And I, I saw them in another state park, so yes. I'm telling on them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, well, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, this is my first tour of my rig. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first live tour of a rig, so I'm learning as I go. And uh, then then comes the awkward turning the camera off part. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should point it at you for a hot second so people know who Butterfly uh, Tracks is. Oh, yeah. They know me. They okay. know me. And I did, in, in fact, when I um, told them about the time change, I, I put my puffy face on there. Okay. <laughs> Mornings are not my best no, camera time. You showed up earlier, and I was like, you, can you wait a yeah. little bit? I got to massage my face. <laughs> well, that's like... okay. We did have generators going at the time, so yeah, it's much yeah, quieter now. You turned it off right inside. Yeah, it's quiet now. Listen. Yeah. Oh, here's my tinnitus. Oh, no, no. <laughs> okay, everybody, signing off. <laughs>